Well, it's wonderful to be here. You know, listening to these inspiring talks, you convinced me that I should go into public health. <laughs> if you want something that's sustainable, that makes you feel like you're never going to work a day in your life, that makes a difference to everybody, that focuses on health equity, what else? So for those of you who are students who haven't decided what you're going to do with your life, I hope you'll think about this. I was asked to talk about a couple of issues on tobacco. I've heard of tobacco, you know. Um, I want to know that big tobacco is listening and watching. Um, you may not think so, but let me tell you, you're wrong if you don't think so. They are omnipresent. Um, just look at the movies. There's more smoking now in the movies than ever. We have major improvements in the rate of smoking, but they are definitely not giving up. And who do you think they want? They want adolescents. And they want you. You are their target market. Um, the interesting thing about the movies is that in the key study, um, looking both cross-sectionally and longitudinally, uh, that Dartmouth did and, and started in 2003, and they looked at 2,600 adolescents for about three years um, to try and understand how many started smoking and how that related to what they saw in the movies. And you will be shocked by this conclusion, really shown perfectly in my PowerPoint presentation, which if you haven't seen, you're really missing something. <laughs> uh, they looked at the movies, and those who looked at more movies, more feature films, were more likely to smoke. In fact, Based on the U.S. population, the estimated exposure to screens accounted for a full 37% of new smokers. 37% of new smokers under 18. So why do you think that is? Well, when your hero, when your idol smoke, duh, what do you think it makes you want to do? And there's actually some good information that shows how your brain starts to crave nicotine. Uh, when you watch tobacco, you in fact start to say, I really want to be associated with my icon. I want to smoke just like he or she does. And it's amazing, actually, how many unpaid spokespeople there currently are in the movies. Now, they're not all unpaid, but the stars who smoke seem to want to smoke in the movies because they already are addicted. And some of the directors have, you know, they say they like the effects. And the movie studios say, well, you know, it's really not our job. It's those of us who do the creative work. So there still is a huge amount of smoking. And that is accounting for more than a third of adolescent smoking. So there's a proposal, not a very difficult one to figure out. I'm sure each of you could figure it out. And that is, if you have smoking in the movies, rate it R. And we have suggested that to Hollywood. And you'll be shocked by their response. I should say they're non-response. It doesn't seem to trouble them that the things that they're contributing to are leading to 37% of the adolescents who start smoking. So um, it's really interesting. That's even a bigger impact than regular tobacco advertising, which is, a, by the way, how much, how many dollars do you think that accounts for a year? Try close to 10 billion, with a B, dollars a year trying to hook people on smoking and keep them smoking. And it also is not surprising that in the documents that finally were uncovered in the tobacco papers, totally confidential before, they found that there was millions of dollars being paid to film producers, film studios, actors, directors, et cetera, and writers to include smoking in the movies. So that's one story about big tobacco. And we have work to do, because you should be on the side of saying, if you're smoking in movies, make it an R-rated movie then those young people aren't going to be as attracted to smoking. It'll make a big difference. Now, um, one experience I will have, um, I, I went to, uh, I did two press conferences with Stan Glantz, who's a great leader in this, in Hollywood. And it got all kinds of, of coverage. And we heard a lot from, from the movie studios in response. There was a, it was deafening, in fact, the silence. <laughs> So remember, remember that the tobacco industry is very smart. They are not dumb. You may consider them evil, but they are not dumb. And they, what they're looking for 
are new smokers. Now, why are they looking for new smokers? Because if you smoke, you're so much likely to die of a smoking-related disease, they gotta work doubly hard to hook a new generation to replace those that have already died from smoking. So they're working doubly hard now, and the, they are going to, they have been able to replace some of those smokers, but most of you in this room are too smart. I wouldn't even embarrass you by asking how many of you in this room smoke. I wouldn't even think of it. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, <laughs> But let's move on to the, to the, let's move on to the new scourge. I will ask this question because this might be a more neutral question. Some of you may even be willing to answer it truthfully. How many of you have been vaping? I see a one half hand, another half hand. I see two and a half hands so far. Well, e-cigarettes, of course, is the new scourge. It's only been around for a decade. It continues to grow very, very rapidly. And of course, they don't want to say smoking, they want to say vaping to make it sound cooler. But what, is, what, is, uh, what are e-cigarettes? Well, what you do is you heat the vapor, it has in it nicotine and has other additives, and you produce inhaled vapor without combustion. Now, it's probably less harmful than combustible cigarettes, so all those thousands of chemicals that are liberated when you have combustion. But on the other hand, and, and it's less addicting, although it is, can, can be addicting, less addicting than regular cigarettes. But the use is growing very rapidly. 80% of high school users who smoke cigarettes in the latest survey also were vaping. So what does that suggest to us? Suggest to us that there's a lot of dual use. And in high school students, the percentages who, had, who were smokers has been going down. But the percentage who were vaping has almost tripled in the last year, almost tripled. So vaping is becoming increasingly common. And there's a lot of concerns about what some of the ingredients are. Some of those are things like formaldehyde, you know, the kind of things you'd like to have as a regular part of your diet <laughs> for sustainability. Uh, and there's a lack of regulation. There was a, an average of 215 calls to poison centers about the overdose of nicotine and about one half of those in children five and under. So why should big tobacco care? Well, why they care about e-cigarettes because they're concerned about loss of market. They're buying up the vaping companies. So big tobacco is the predominant maker now of these cigarettes. They're interested in moving to vaping to combustibles because combustibles get you hooked better than, than the e-cigarettes. So what do we need to do? Very simple. We need thoughtful regulation by the FDA to say we're going to treat, we're going to treat these e-cigarettes just like regular cigarettes. We're going to worry about what's in them. We're going to worry about the manufacturing processes. We're not going to let you advertise to kids. The, and we also are going to not allow them to undermine smoke-free air laws. And we can't have them advertising dual use as a smart thing to do. They also shouldn't allow sales to, to those 18 and under. And by the way, why don't we have 21 as the age of smoking? That's a step that we could make very easily. You might be surprised that there's some things like gummy bears flavors in e-cigarettes. Of course, they're appealing to the older adults, right? <laughs> gummy bear and candy sweet and you know popcorn and um, sugar sweetened candy and anyway. You can tell that they're really appealing to the older population. They also, we also need to have childproof packaging. Kids under five are getting to these and winding up poison. And finally, we need to know what's in them. That would be really important. So big tobacco is still around. You are still a target. You're too smart, but they don't know that yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before Dr. Fielding has to go, since he is back on campus, we are, we are very certain that he won't be smoking in his office, but we did want to give him his own personal sign, uh, since most people do know that around campus uh, we do have a, a sign telling everybody that we have a tobacco-free campus. So, uh, Dr. Fielding, this is for you. I am, I am so proud to be part of a campus, to be part of a university that says no to smoking on campus. 
It has been extremely important and it sends the message well beyond the, the confines of this university. So congratulations to everybody.